All right, so now that we've established this equivalence of categories, we can ask ourselves why, if for any reason, did we bother? So what was the point of doing all of this? Well, in general, what are equivalence of categories, equivalences of categories useful for? I suppose they're useful for a lot of things, but one thing they're very useful for is taking categorical problems, constructions, observations, etc. in one category and porting them over to the other. Maybe they were going, maybe something which was hard over in this category will become easy over in this category. Maybe some construction which was very complicated over here will become very easy over here. And so on and so on. So equivalence of category, equivalences of categories are nice because they give us a new perspective on some category that we care about. And maybe by itself, uh, that doesn't mean very much, right? Maybe we've constructed some new perspective, but it isn't good for anything. I mean, you can always construct some uh, perspective. There's no guarantee that it'll be useful. So what I want to do is convince you that there are some ways in which this italic space perspective is useful. So maybe the category of sheaves is the one that we care about, and italic spaces are just some kind of construction that will help us learn or see some things about sheaves. And I want to convince you that this actually works, that there are some upsides to ital spaces. In general, I think this construction is kind of convoluted, but there are some ways in which it's useful and nice. So one of them is sheafification. So um, we're going to get a new way, I guess, of doing sheafification um, through what we've discussed with gamma and lambda. So let's see that. I guess we should start with the question, what is sheafification? What is sheafification? If we're going to be coming up with some new way of describing sheafification, we should know what it is. So I like to think of sheafification as the left adjoint to the inclusion of sheaves into pre-sheaves. And let me spell that out. So there is an inclusion. There's an inclusion of categories of sheaves on x into pre-sheaves on x. Let's call this guy i. So sheafification we'll call it sigma is a functor which is the left adjoint to i. If it ex well, is the left adjoint to i. I mean, this is a description rather than a construction, right? Maybe the left adjoint doesn't exist, but the left adjoint does in fact exist, and sheafification is that left adjoint. Sheafification is the functor sigma, such that sigma is the left adjoint to i. So sigma is some functor going in this direction. That's where sigma is going. Yes. So. Right, this is one way of characterizing sheafification, and this is the way that I like. Maybe I'm hesitating because maybe um, implicit in this conversation is the fact that left adjoints are essentially unique, right? And I've said that uh, sh sheafification is the left adjoint of I. It's any functor making, it's anything you could fill in over here that would make this true. Anything you could put over here. And any such functor doing that is essentially unique. So I'm kind of assuming that. Okay. So. Yes, sheafification is the left adjoint to i. So what does that actually mean? So there are several ways of caching out what an adjoint is, or several ways of fleshing out what an adjoint is. Here's the one that I like. So there exists, what this means is, this means there exists a functor isomorphism There exists a functor isomorphism between Hom and the sheaf world of sigma in the first variable, and then just the identity in the second variable, with Hom in the pre sheaf world of the identity here and the inclusion here. So this is a bifunctor, I guess, but if you view it on the product categories, these are just functors. There's a functor isomorphism. It's so maybe slightly more concrete, concretely, not a lot more concretely, but slightly more concretely. What this means is that 
Well, let's let P be a pre-sheaf. Let's let S be a sheaf. It means that there exists an isomorphism between Hom and sheaf world of sigma of P S to Hom in the pre-sheaf world of P and S. I'm not writing the inclusion here, just for convenience. And this is natural. Natural in S and P. And what naturality means is exactly that you have this functor isomorphism. Okay, so let's actually check that this is true. So sheaf of a well, let me make my claim before I cl check that it's true. So this is what it means for sheafification to be the left adjoint of inclusion. And I claim that gamma lambda is the left adjoint to this inclusion. This inclusion map here, by which I mean this inclusion map, the inclusion of sheaves into pre-sheaves. I claim that gamma lambda is left adjoint to I, and that implies that gamma lambda is what we mean by sheafification. is sheafification. We define sheafification to be anything which is the left adjoint to i, and I'm claiming that gamma lambda is the left adjoint to i. So it's the sheafification functor. Okay, so let's see this. This is actually not very hard to prove, given what we already know. So as above, let's let P be a pre-sheaf, and we'll let S be a sheaf, and let's look at HOM in sheaf world of gamma lambda applied to P, and then we'll look at this. So we want ultimately to show that this HOM set is isomorphic to this one. So let's see that. Well. So this guy, this guy is isomorphic to HOM in sheaves of gamma lambda of P with gamma lambda of S. Why is this true? This is just because uh, S is isomorphic, in fact naturally isomorphic to gamma lambda of s. This is something which was mentioned earlier. Not in this video, but in, er in an earlier video. Okay. Now this guy is isomorphic. This HOM set is isomorphic to the HOM set in the category of tal spaces of lambda of p with lambda of s. Why is this true? How do we go from here to here? Well, this is because of the equivalence of categories. So this is the equivalence between, and this is the equivalence, between sheaves and ital spaces. Okay. We have another isomorphism. This is Hom and pre-sheaves between P and gamma lambda S. And this guy is by the adjunction, the general adjunction that lambda is the left adjoint of gamma. And then again we'll have, using an already used fact, this is Hamann pre-sheaves of P of S, and we get this guy because of this fact that S is isomorphic, naturally isomorphic in fact, to gamma lambda of S. So we have the desired isomorphism. We have an isomorphism between this HOM set and this HOM set. That's exactly what we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted in order to show that this adjunction 
was true. So gamma lambda is indeed the left adjoint to i, so gamma lambda is sheaf of occasion.